Hi, we've got a really great show today. Um, I'm here with Tommy Hollenstein, and Tommy is an amazing artist. I actually saw Tommy in the show at the Dream Center, and I was like, wow, blown away by that. I thought, you know what? Got to have him on the show. So thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me. So as you see around me everywhere is all of his, all of his artwork. And I mean, what an inspiration. You know, I, I know that probably each piece that you do have probably has a special meaning behind it. Um, I won't make you tell about every single right. one, but I know that it, it probably does. And, and so you also, you, now you sell your artwork or like do you have an art gallery? Like how does that happen? I do different shows around the country. I mean, different galleries will do different shows for you for a given period of time. I've got a gallery out in Boston that carries my artwork. Mm -hmm. I had a gallery in uh, Australia that carries it down there. Oh, wow. And then I've done quite a few shows in L.A. Just closed a show out at, uh, at the University of Madison, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. That ran for six weeks in, uh, from February through the end of March. And so you, so you must have, be having to do this like all the time in order to, you know, to get enough stuff up to have a show. I mean, it's not like one or two pieces or? No, oh no, the shows can go anywhere from 12, 13 pieces to the Madison show was 32 pieces. Okay. The Encino show was close to 40 pieces. Okay, so I have yeah. a silly question because I don't really know much about that world, but right. do they buy the actual piece that's sitting there or do you go home and make the, the duplicate of it? Oh, no, 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 they're all, they're all one of a kind. I can't duplicate anything, especially because it's okay. done with the tires of the chair. So they're all originals. Okay. If someone wants, I do have G clays of a few of the paintings, painting I did uh, years ago called Salvation. That one I did because that was a pretty popular piece. Mm -hmm. I did some some uh, prints of it. Okay. And sold those as, as uh, limited edition. Okay. So the big question is, how do you paint? It's all done with the tires of my wheelchair. I don't okay. use any brushes at all. You can see the boards here. The boards have a background color, and then we apply the paint to the tire by brushing it onto the tire, or sometimes all pour paint around the canvas with the board laying on the floor Okay. and I'll roll through the paint then back onto the canvas or I'll sometimes uh, pour the paint onto the board itself because mm -hmm. they're all quarter inch masonite boards. It's a hard surface to be painting on because with the weight of the chair and whatnot it's got to be a real slick surface so oh, that I can okay. slide around. Like this canvas is here just absorbing the excess paint mm. but it doesn't allow me to slide the paint around, doesn't allow me to do the layers with you know the way I like to paint right. which is on the harder surface. Right, okay. So now, my another question is, probably everybody's wondering, how did you find out that you had this talent to do that? I mean, did you accidentally spill paint on the floor one day and no, fall over it? How it came about, I mean, I, I, at five years old, I wanted to be an artist. Okay. And that was my desire, and I did a lot of art for quite a few years. And then what happened was, uh, in 1985, I had a bicycle accident okay. where I broke my neck, became quadriplegic. And I spent 19 days in intensive care, mm. spent six months in rehabilitation hospital over at Northridge. And during that process, they, they knew that I liked art, so in the recreational therapy, they were trying to take, teach me how to paint with a mouth stick oh, or a paintbrush okay. in my mouth, which I didn't like. There's some amazing artists out there, Johnny Erickson being one of them, mm -hmm. amazing art, mouth stick artist, but it just was too confining for me. It was too close to my face. It just mm. wasn't, there was no freedom to it. So I really didn't do much art for quite a while. I did a little bit on computer and whatnot, but then what happened was, as you see, I've got a service dog here named Hiley. Okay. She's a canine companion service dog trained to help me out. Right. I got my first dog two years after my injury. Mm -hmm. And as he started to get older, I kept thinking, I want to do something to have as a, as a memory he and I other than just a photograph on the wall. So I kept thinking, okay, one day I'll roll through paint. I'll have the dog walk through paint alongside me. So I'd see tire tracks and paw prints alongside each other. Oh. So that was the very first painting I ever did. Right. And I did that in a warehouse where I was selling wheelchair accessible vans. Okay. And so then all of a sudden I realized, well, well, wait a minute, I can actually use the tires of my chair to paint with. Oh, okay. So it was something I came up with. You know, I mean, if it wasn't for the gift of my dog and God's idea and inspiring me to use the dog right. and the love out of that animal, I never would have thought, hey, I can use the tires of my chair, let's do a painting with the tires. Because right. why would I want to see tire tracks all the time? Yeah. I mean, it was, you know, in the chair's my transportation, but, you know, I wasn't wanting to necessarily see something that, you know, was a memory of the injury all the time. So, but for the love of the dog, in the memory of he and I. And what was his name? Weaver. Weaver, okay. Yeah. And that was your first dog? That was my first dog, yeah. Okay, so now getting to the accident. So right. you were an amazing athlete, right? I did a lot of experience. Now from your sports. website, it shows yeah. that you did some pretty good stuff. Yeah, I loved surfing and, you know, uh, I loved to surf, I loved to mountain bike, I loved, I loved extreme sports, I loved snow skiing, anything with speed and, mm -hmm. you know, and thrill, action, you know. Um, so yeah, when the accident happened, 
And I used to race BMX motocross when I was a child. Oh. And mountain biking was just getting started. Okay. So I, that's why I was out. I wasn't out training that day, but I was, I was just on a fun ride. And, you know, I, from your website, it said your accident happened in Bell Canyon, which is where I live, which was very right. interesting. But So now tell me what happened. So you were riding your bike. I was a, going across the dirt lot. There was, there was a dirt lot to build a home, a slope, another dirt lot, and a slope. So I went down two slopes expecting to go down a third. Also, when I got to what should have been a third slope, it was dug down about five and a half feet straight down, four feet out, and two feet up. All of a sudden, I got there. I thought, oh, my God, what's this doing here? And I thought to myself, this is going to be a bad one. And I've rolled cars, done all kinds okay. of stuff. Never broke a bone in my body. Had a lot of stitches, but never broke a bone. But as soon as I hit my head, it sounded like a metal rod hitting the ground, like boing, and I died. I mean, I was up in the clouds, going farther and farther away from my body. I saw my body laying there motionless, but I wasn't in it. I thought, oh, my God, it's my time to go. I'm dead. And I thought, you know, God, please give me another chance. As soon as I prayed that quick little prayer, I came right back into my body. I'm laying there flat, flat, face down, motionless. I couldn't feel my legs, didn't know where they were. I could barely shrug my shoulders. And I thought, okay, I'm still alive, but I'm still going to die because a lot of times your lungs fill with fluid right. and you'll pass, pass. So I said, God, let me be able to breathe. Whatever happens from here, I can handle. And then my buddy was 20 yards behind me. So when he approached me, I said, Dave, don't move me. I broke my neck. He said, no, no, you broke your collarbone. I said, no, don't move me. Go call the paramedics and call my parents. So he hiked up to a house, used their phone, called the paramedics and my parents. My mom showed up before the paramedics did. And she saw me laying there motionless. And she was, she was kind of lost it. But then they, the ambulance came. They asked me what I could feel, where, you know, what I could feel. So they knew I you know, had a spinal cord injury. So they, were, they taped me to a board and put the neck brace on. And they chose to fly me to the hospital rather than drive me to the ambulance. And then I spent... Uh, 19 days in intensive care over there and six months in the rehab. When I first got there, they told my parents, you know, you better call in his brothers and sisters. He's not going to make it through the night. Mm. And I was raised Catholic, so... I was going to say, were you saved at the time? I was raised Catholic, went to elementary school, Catholic high school. So they had a priest come give me my last rites. Right. And uh, two separate times, actually. Because while I was in intensive care, my left lung collapsed. I got pneumonia. They thought I wouldn't make it through that. So the priest came back a second time. The first time, you're thinking it's kind of routine. Second time, you think, oh, this might be a little more serious. Right. And, but then I, you know, I knew, hey, if God brought me back the first time, I'm here for a reason. I'm here for a purpose. Right. You know, I'm, this, this isn't going to happen. I just, you know, I had to fight. It was a fight every night, you know, mm. just to, to fight through it. But uh, Now that was, was how many years ago? It was 26 years ago. March, March 10th, 1985 was the date of the accident. Now, where can anybody go to look on your website to, you know, purchase some art or find out where your next if, gallery will be? If you be? go to TommyHollenstein.com okay. and go to current events, events, upcoming events, my phone number's on there. If you want to feel you feel free, free to call me. Okay. That's for the studio here. You know, um, if I'm not having a local show at the time, you want to come purchase art, you can purchase it right here out of the studio. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I, we're out of time. But I've okay. got, I know there's a lot more to Tommy. Um, but thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. And our foundation scripture today is your favorite scripture, which probably got you through this yeah. whole ordeal, and which is what? I can do all things through God who strengthens me, through Christ who strengthens me, in which I can do all things. Anybody can do all things if yes. they've got God in their life, absolutely. And so, and God is the driving force. Without a doubt, life. yeah. If, if I didn't have God and the use of prayer, I'd, I'd never be able to have the success and the happiness I have. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. I thank you. Appreciate it.